Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome on Transcontinental Times. In uh, 360 degree live show, we have Adrian Eni, uh, is, is a special guest today in today's session, joining us from France, uh, who's having almost 20 years of experience in multiple business like IT, mobile, and also consulting some startups across Europe. And he has proven that, that the extensive experience in you know uh, managing the multiple business with his extensive experience. So Adrian, welcome on Transcontinental Times. Uh, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to have you on this on this show. And it was we are expecting some kind of you know the fruitful discussion uh, uh, across uh, your experience. We can we can get it something, and our audience can uh, can get some knowledge out of it. Yeah. So uh, let's let's start our discussion. What what we are expecting from right? So 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 when you started EWN, uh, that's what East West Digital News. What was the vision statement, right? So I can understand in Europe, uh, the mostly you know the digital media is right now you know the very competitive. They are coming with different kind of uh, statement, different kind of mindset, right? So being a the co-founder of uh, East West Digital News, what was the thought which came in your mind to to start this uh, platform to to encourage uh, the new uh, IT people and also uh, the people who are looking for you know uh, journalism uh, platform to to propagate their idea. Well, first of all, thank you very much, Roshan, for uh, taking me on this show. And uh, a big hello to Transcontinental Times audience. Uh, so I, it's a pleasure to share my uh, experience, my humble experience. Uh, so you're asking about East-West Digital News, which is uh, a news uh, and business research agency, uh, which I co-founded 10 years ago. Uh, uh, to cover the uh, uh, tech markets of Eastern Europe, of such countries like Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, Kazakhstan, and other such countries. So we created this company at that time because uh, th th there was many interesting things happening in, the, uh, in these countries from the point of view of emerging startups, emerging tech parks, uh, new investment programs, including... Uh, 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 programs from foreigners, foreign players, foreign investors, or foreign entrepreneurs. Uh, but but there was uh, virtually no uh, English language source of information for all this. So people who who, who know who know Russian the Russian language can of course understand and read the Russian press, the Russian business press, and tech blogs. But those who don't know Russian don't have this possibility, and the international. Um, English language tech media, uh, and this is an issue, they cover very well Silicon Valley, they cover very well certain Asian and European areas, but there are entire emerging markets that they cover very poorly. So this is what we try to, to fill that gap, to offer an international audience, reliable information, news stories, and industry reports about the tech markets of Eastern Europe. Fantastic, Adrian. It's amazing to know that you know that you guys are doing good. I, I saw the profile, and you know, entire team is amazing. Uh, I have you know, I got you know, great great uh, you know impression, right? So first time when I saw that, uh, all your team, right? So it's, it's good to know that. So during uh, the pandemic, right? So how uh, est West Digital News in entire Europe, like especially on Eastern Europe, how you guys are managing the business? If you talk about maintaining a site, maintaining a team, so so I. I can see that, right? So most of the media industries are going through uh, difficult time right now. Uh, but it's more interesting to know for our audience, you know, to 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 understand what are the challenges which you are going through and how you are managing that. If you could elaborate, that will be amazing. Well, um, from a technical point of view, this is yeah. uh, we have a very um, very simple website. It's a WordPress. Website is open source. It's a very small cost for hosting that or building that. It's very classic, and there's nothing special to say. And we have very classic formats. We don't have sophisticated next generation, you know, uh, videos or, or huge uh, or any clubhouse uh, presence or things like that. So we're very classic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not really our focus. We certainly, if we had more means, we would certainly develop plenty of fascinating technologies, but it's not really necessary at that point for our audience. Our audience is rather classic businessmen or journalists or analysts and, 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 and our, our tech uh, founders, and they just need 
clear and, and reliable info. So from a technical sp standpoint, there's nothing to say. Uh, from a business standpoint, it is a ra rather original model because we have a small audience. We don't have a huge audience like TechCrunch, for example, yeah. or, or the yeah. Russian language uh, yeah. local media because we write in English language okay. about Russia. So mm -hmm. this is a, a very small intersection of an, of, a, of an international audience that is interested in this very specific market. It's not big numbers. It's very um, uh, high quality audience because we have leading investors or politicians or analysts who read us, but it's not huge numbers. So we don't monetize that with advertising. We perfectly understand that. It was never in, in our plan. But uh, however, we can, based on this media platform, we can first uh, uh, publish uh, industry reports that can be sold or sponsored. Uh -huh. We organize events also. Uh, we are one of the uh, 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 leading event organizers in Russia in the field of e-commerce and retail tech and such similar topics. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we also have some business consulting and we just get known. So we have startups who are asking me to mentor them because they saw that we're very connected, etc. Or I'm also advisor to certain funds, etc. who operate in the region. So this is not a kind of media monetization model. It's everything indirectly related or allowed by or facilitated by the, the media that generates some revenue and a fantastic networking. Correct. That's that's amazing. But uh, Adrian, interesting to know that, for example, let's take a scenario, right? For example, most of the print media and digital media are running on some specific model, right? Some operating model. Uh, there are some source of funds. There are source of incomes, whereas company grow and you know they evolve together. But in this East-West digital news, what you're talking about, you guys are supporting entrepreneurs. You guys are supporting, you know, the innovation uh, and, and bringing their voice all together on the international platform. But my, my question is how you guys are keeping yourself motivated to drive this mission? Because finally, you need some kind of financial support right down the line. Let's say that, you know, one year or two years, right? You must have some kind of plans uh, so that while considering these factors, how you guys are considering to meet these financial targets in upcoming years? Well, our content is, 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 is free. We, mm -hmm. don't, we don't receive any money from users, although we consider introducing some, you know, some uh, online donations for our loyal readers who want to help, as done in Correct. Wikipedia and certain media. This has been considered, we'll probably introduced that, but for the moment we have not uh, we have not uh, earned uh, a cent uh, from that. Yeah. We don't monetize with advertising, as I told you, uh, with very few exceptions, mm -hmm. few advertisers, but they are very focused on certain areas and this segment. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, very, it's just ridiculous amounts. Um, uh, so uh, the monetization is, as I said, indirect. Uh, the media is, uh, offers us some legitimacy to do some industry reports or events yeah. mm -hmm. or uh would offer us uh, as a company or personally some mentorship or investment opportunities and here's the interest and a huge networking uh, power so yeah. uh, the media in itself has very small costs uh, it's, you know it's two two short stories per day sometimes deep stories but it's not the big amount we can do it at, at little cost the, the technical mm -hmm. costs are also very low so yeah. the model is not uh, direct generation of revenues Perfect. So interesting to know that, for example, uh, you know, if you talk about the media, right? So let's say talk about digital media or print media. Uh, there is always political and environmental pressure, right? So, for example, uh, I'm talking about a generic media industry, whereas uh, let's say the A political party uh, and B political party, right? So a, if you if imagine you being a chief editor of East West Digital Network and let's say that you are talking about some kind of political issues happening in France. OK. But the, 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 the Prime Minister of France is is getting a notice about that and saying that, okay, East West Digital News is talking about me and, and the work which you guys are exposing, right? Actually, that is a work of media to always criti criticize government and expose what they have to do to create a pressure on government, right? That's a scenario. 
but to talk about b b b situation whereas the opposition party is always think that you guys are against you are, you guys are supporting them right so, so some somebody going to benefit out of it right but ultimate the, the motto of media industry is not about to support any political party or not any political agenda what my question is to manage the situation how this is a global problem adrian because if you look at in united states right where was donald trump was a president uh, you know almost uh, in last year and right now joe biden came right so let's say the new york times supporting joe biden so the support of donald trump will say that new york times is is biased uh, you know biased towards joe biden right so this is a perception of human beings so just to manage that perception what are the best practices we can implement what do you think uh, would be the best possibility even media industries every media industry is not supporting a party or b party they are equally you know helping uh, helping democracy and people to understand the importance of uh, uh, the content and importance of the message but the perception of human beings are getting you know diluted with this this with this miscommunication and misperception towards media industry so how we can rectify that that's my question perhaps i will split my answer in two parts Perfect. one part about the uh, specific case of east west digital news and another yeah. part more generally with my personal opinion on, on answering your question, more generally yeah. speaking. Yeah. Regarding East-West Digital News, you cited France, but we cover Eastern Europe markets. So yeah. there is indeed a subtlety when we cover Russian news, because as you know, uh, Russia is not a, a fully, um, I would say, uh, democratic countries, by Western standards at least. Yeah. And uh, the media there are... Uh, um, are uh, to various extent under the influence or direct control, control of the government. Uh, I'm not speaking about the, the, the online media, which are many of them are independent, yep. uh, but still there's also some pressure, some pressure on online media. So yep. in the case of East-West Digital News, uh, when it comes to covering Russia, although we also cover other countries like Ukraine, yep. but when it's about Russia, uh, first of all, we are not about politics. We are about business and uh, startup news and e-commerce news. So there are very few examples, very few of our articles have a direct or, or have any political implications, but some of them do have. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, when the gov Russian government is um, uh, restraining Twitter uh, or preparing perhaps potentially to... Uh, oh, they blocked uh, LinkedIn a few years ago for uh, lack of compliance with personal data laws. And they might uh, block one day uh, Facebook or something, or YouTube. Uh, when there's a sort of digital rebellion in Russia among young people, young users of TikTok, we are not writing a lot about it, but we still write about it. And this is subtle. Yeah. So what we do in this case is um, we are very factual. Uh, we, uh, whenever there's something controversial, we use such words as according to or alleged, etc., to make sure that we are not considered as being uh, involved or, or pro or, 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 or explicitly pro or against something. But the very fact that we mention this and do it in an in the independent way, cautiously, respectfully, but independently, sometimes there is they are understatements in what we write. Yeah. Uh, so it's not open, but the very fact that we raise such certain issues and, the, 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 and, and certain facts, even if we present it in a very neutral and factual way, uh, this, it's still information, and that information might not please some persons, some political force. This is true. But on the other hand, 95% of articles are completely non-political because it's about business issues. Yeah. And even if it was a little bit more than that, frankly, no one cares because we don't speak about, you know, we're not a political uh, publication. We, 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 we very rarely write about things that might have some political implications. We don't write about oil, which is huge, huge amounts at stakes. So we are a very, and we, we have a very small audience. So we, we are unnoticed. There's only one instance where when we received open criticism and even threats from a Russian reader, an anonymous Russian reader, uh, it was about Crimea. 
uh, which is, as you know, uh, under Russian rule, which has been under Russian rule uh, since uh, the, 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 the middle of the last decade, uh, and it, which is not um, um, uh, legally uh, uh, very correct from an international uh, law standpoint. It was uh, an, an annexation, according to the majority of, 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 of legal experts. So when we wrote about Crimea, without we, 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 we tried to be very factual and, of course, not to write explicitly that it belonged to Russia or it was annexated by Russia or it, it truly belongs to Ukraine or not. We didn't write that explicitly because we didn't want to, to be regarded as pro or against something. But the very fact that we did not explicitly said that it belonged to Russia mm -hmm. was perceived as a anti-Russian stance by an extremist reader who started sending us threats. So and we answered, we uh, provided a, a lesson of journalism. We uh, explained which quotes were, were, were um, potentially um, uh, problematic, but these quotes, quotes were just perfect. We didn't say it was Russian or not Russian. We just said that it was a controversial issue and we refused to, to have any, any, any own uh, judgment about it. So this is regarding East-West digital news. In one word, we write very rarely on, we never write directly on politics, but sometimes business facts with politic, political implications, we do it very cautiously and almost no one cares because we're too small and we're not about big, big politics or big oil or something like that. Now, regarding your question, more generally speaking, I happen to be a, a graduate of, of, of Paris, the Paris Political Science Institute. So I certainly have an opinion about the question you're raising. You're raising. Um, this is actually a global global issue, uh, Adrian. This is yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a huge issue. Yeah. So um, when I learned uh, these things in the Paris Institute of Political Science, hmm. uh, there was a very clear uh, principle. It's distinguishing opinion and facts. Uh, and uh, there was a time when the U.S. press did it very well, very clearly. Uh, perhaps it's less the case now, but I think that any honest publication should be very clear. If it's an opinion, it's okay. Let them have opinion. Everyone can have, can have opinion, but let it be stated as so, without fake news and without bias. You can have an opinion with, yeah. while being honest. Uh, yeah. the, the problem but, is not having an opinion and and printing it, but do it, do it, doing it dishonestly. And 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 we have witnessed such a degradation of that uh, over the last. Uh, one or two decades, perhaps. It's never been perfect, of course. If you look at the past, there has always been fake news in the media, even 100 years ago, or even, you know, during the French Revolution, two, two centuries and more ago, uh, the, the hatred ago, uh, against the Queen, Marie Antoinette, was largely due to fake news that were distributed through, through little papers, you know? Okay. Uh, so uh, it's not new, but it's been degradating, uh, especially due to the lightning speed of social networks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So my opinion is that uh, uh, there should be uh, more uh, uh, control of 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 this uh, uh, of by the I would say a strict most a more strict ethical stance by the the the, the media publication uh, about what is opinion and what is what is what is uh, what is factual information. This would be uh, if it was more respected, it would certainly better be better. But Adrian, the interesting point is here how we can control a threat. Because imagine that if you are doing a right journalism, there is always a threat from political parties who are in power. But but that is impact eventually impacting uh, uh, you know, the, the common behavior and, and people who are really struggling for some kind of issue. Let's say talk about education. If government is not doing something great in the education department, and let's say that EWDN talking about the technology which can bring a revolution in education industry and you're exposing that kind of failure of the government, obviously there might be some kind of threat. So how we can control that threat? Because this is happening since last decades, right? So if you look at uh, the trend and the patterns in the media industry, the threats are always there, right? But but how we can control as it, you know, being a being a leading organization across Europe, I'm talking about Euro, Europe perspective, how we can set a practice and, and a role model uh, for 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 the world, not about only France or Spain, to to have that structure and create some kind of group and union and association with support of European Union and control that kind of things if nobody get 
it you know any government is trying to pressurize or uh, you know the prime minister or president are feeling that they are not secure enough to to perform their duty on the on the ground then obviously media has to come and expose the reality what they has to do they have they suppose has to implement right but this is not happening actually if you look at the ground perspective uh, you know i'm let's talk about china right china press freedom is completely down right so the people who are working there in press they cannot write uh, openly about government what they are doing it so this is uh, the major issue and uh, and i think uh, possibly united nation can can come together along with many honest medias across worldwide they are working together right so can they create some kind of group or association to have this kind of a strong foundation to deal with this kind of situation uh, uh, worldwide uh, what is your opinion on that what is what you think about this well uh, i'm not sure that uh, the un can do much because hmm. uh, you know uh, even in wars they cannot do much <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Uh, uh, i believe that there are uh, international media associations that have their <laughs> you know their <laughs> principle their statements and 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 that are supposed to to create some standards mm. uh, uh, but again whether it is and there are laws also and yeah. more and more laws that sometimes are positive because they're mm -hmm. supposed to avoid certain mm. things um, but this would not prevent unfortunately um, perhaps a couple of very bad things mm. uh, first of all and, and it's not only about the government the political pressure for the government so this is not the only threat the another threat is business interests and there are so many uh, uh well in france for example in france we have uh, nine big media out of ten that are controlled by uh french billionaires and and this is the, the these are opinion makers in, in the end of the day so and this is a true problem and this has been a degradation a deterioration because at the end of world war ii france adopted laws that were supposed to avoid that the press be under the control of the financial powers and it's no longer the case in france so we can see so first the the, the control not only from the government but from business interest uh, secondly uh, the degradation due to the uh, uncontrollable social networks and all the fake news and all the conspiracy uh, theories etc that d completely distort the picture because before uh, at least you have a few uh, chief editors in a country who control the information now you, this is broken you have thousands and thousands of, of 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 sources of information and there's no 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 the, the control is completely um um you know uh decentralized and so and 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 this is on the one hand it, it it's it's it was supposed to be a dream of 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 you know of uh, libertarian libertarian democracy and 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 the truth is emerging from the multiplicity of opinions but in the end of the day it didn't happen uh, the truth is being distorted by the multiplicity of, of opinions. Uh, so, you know, it's not only as a conclusion. Uh, there are any regulations you want to you you can do uh, any uh, UN or national uh, laws you can do. This is perhaps good, uh, but uh, they should target not only political pressures but also pressure for from big business and also. Um, uh, definitely uh, um, wisely, but definitely do something against this complete uh, uh, distortion of information through social networks and, and these fabrics, these manufacturers of, of, of fakes. And, and you know, they, they made policy, politics. They, they, they made the election in certain countries. In Trump, Bolsonaro, they wouldn't have been, or the Brexit, they wouldn't have been, that wouldn't have happened. Uh, uh, if w without such distortions, it's not the only causes, of course. It's the deep political causes, and social causes, but these distortions, the use of the unfair use of media and social networks, they they created. Uh, they, they were one of the factors that made that made that made history. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, uh, we are on the right page. But you know, uh, what I was trying to you know highlight this situation, right? So. If, uh, you know, as we are running a media industry, right, so, and we are looking forward to, to, to redefine a journalism industry in upcoming 10 years or 20 years, that's a, that's a the clear statement, right? But what, what, what I'm trying to understand, I'm talking about Europe perspective, okay? Let's talk, talk about Europe, uh, forget about Africa, America, and Asia. Uh, 
I have seen a situation. Uh, I was speaking to some Spanish journalist, and uh, I got to know that you uh, know uh, from them there was a situation in Spain. Any journalist or any media industry cannot defame or cannot expose the king of the the Spain. Okay, so that was the situation almost ten years or twenty years ago here in Spain. So imagine that if being a journalist, if I am writing something which is not relevant or which is causing a you know damage to society. and i cover and i expose the reality i should be in jail okay so there was they were you know the, the police and the, the the political pressure was misusing power and threatening media in that way i'm talking about spain but let's go to thailand let's go to china china is right now going through that kind of pressure thailand is having a major crisis there so so this is a global issues adrian so you know possibly there is a no solution but what i was thinking if the people like you people like there are many people who are doing this kind of work can they submit this kind of proposal to united nation and think about what we can do together ultimately we need a business we need definitely without money we cannot run our organization but for keeping that money in our pocket does that making our mind satisfied that's a question money if the money is everything possibly we are not doing our our work which we have we supposed to do for society so what my concern is all about society because we are not raising a voice for people we are raising a voice for politicians and politicians are always trying to you know jump from one tree another tree changing mind changing statements so this actually impacting the lifestyle of people who are living in the country think about thailand think about china asia asia is going through massive problem as well even europe america look at donald trump was with when was in america how the the media was controlled right so so this is a misuse of power actually what we can do just in a very quick sentence what we can do that's what i want to understand from you from a from an expert from an entrepreneur expert well from an entrepreneur perspective i would just say that uh uh what we not only can do but must do is mm -hmm. to fulfill our mission regardless of the horrors we can see around us mm -hmm. uh in the best way according to the industry standards and our own ethics and even if a part of the world the largest part of the world cannot be changed at least we as entrepreneur have the power to change things and to Absolutely. build aside a new world uh and so from this point of view uh whatever may happen we have our mission and uh so being an entrepreneur is part of the solution indeed Absolutely. Uh, from this point of view um breaking monopolies of big media and uh, this might be one of the of the things that governments uh, might also do also uh, education as you mentioned for yep. uh, the, the the journalistic standards uh, professionalism and 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 all that uh, this is also important uh, regarding you the un again i'm very skeptical because uh, the un is not the place that uh, that creates rules that are applicable at the national level Uh, if anything any anything can be do uh, can be done in the field of legislation or even education it's it cannot really be done without the the immediate um uh involvement of governments N not so much at the un level what can they say except it's signing beautiful charts and saying that it's the principles and you know that will be respected only in 10% of the cases in the best case scenario so uh the the european union has um, a lot of power as well uh the national governments but the un and the national institutions i would i would put them in the last last place to 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 to, to, get to choose involved. and select yeah and decide yeah but you, you you what you're saying about entrepreneurs is true uh we can not only entrepreneurs but people who organize and and a non-government organization and it's, it's thank god uh even in some authoritarian countries there is some freedom from entrepreneurs perhaps not political freedom freedom but you can still create a charity or a company and you can change the world with that this is true and even if your um if you if your um publication in the field of media would not be about politics you could still do useful things and the same with charity you can just change the world for the best and this is in our hand this is perhaps the only thing that doesn't depend on the government on the un or anyone else absolutely or even the big financial powers you know yeah. You, yeah. you just do it you create it yeah, yeah. but more interestingly uh, adrian uh, you know 
uh, as you mentioned very clearly right so united nation will not interfere in this kind of global issues but my question is what is the importance of united nation if they are not considering or thinking about human rights violation because if you talk about the many countries which is this is a global issues going since last last time i'm i'm in connect with so many united nations people uh, exposing this kind of facts but there is no action even anthony gutierrez who is leading this united nation he should think about this this is a actually serious issue if we cannot help our people and we are just supporting the 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 the, the political agendas to drive the nation that is not purpose actually it is impacting the human values our ethics and also life but if you talk about you know recent research right so whereas europe some some countries in europe has recently grown actually medias are free but but like recently you know some situation in some countries like china thailand press media is not free so this is more uh, uh, more critical situation which, which i think and i think possibly we the people like you me or many people across across world that doing this kind of work without expecting big chunk of money uh, uh, to support so we can think about that and possibly we can you know work together with european union to to propose this kind of idea and have some kind of strong foundation to control this kind of threat mechanism and also to control uh, the transparency in the media so nobody can touch nobody can question your abilities and and power of your voice to to bring and expose someone so that would i think that would be the improvement we can think about okay now moving towards the next question uh, what is most important for you as being an entrepreneur if you think about as per my knowledge there are four p's are always important people process product and partner when you run an industry these are four elements playing a most crucial role so when it comes to east west digital news which are the most focus area and why out of this four piece people process product and partners um people process products and partners yeah uh, probably people Mm -hmm. because we Why? we write about um startups about um and startups is nothing without people who create them entrepreneurs you know it's mm -hmm. a key thing uh we also write about e-commerce and e-commerce is nothing without the consumers as well so mm -hmm. people uh products uh we don't write too much about it when we present a startup for example of course we write briefly about what they do the product their software for example but mm -hmm. we don't go into details because we we believe that if people want to go readers want to go into the details of a of a product what the startup does they just click on their website and know all the details about a, uh, of the product so we don't have to mm -hmm. rephrase that we write about the business and human stories behind that not no, no we don't go too deep into the the, the product itself uh uh process not really it's it's uh, if it sounds more internal we we uh, corporate process or something it's not really what we write about although when it comes to corporate innovation uh mm -hmm. new technologies can uh, improve or change sometimes deeply the processes of an organization in that case we write about it from the innovation point of view uh because we also cover corporate innovation at east west digital news um people product process and what was the last one Partner. partners partners yeah uh yes uh we in a sense we this is a great focus because um business is made of partnerships uh so uh there are partnerships between plenty of of, of you know governments between private companies between public and private companies and uh so we often report on such things of course i think i got a question i, I got an answer from you that's interestingly so uh, another question adrian uh, being an entrepreneur uh, let's say that there are some college graduates uh, someone wanted to start any business let's say talk about they wanted to run commercial uh, e-commerce website somebody want to start a uh, shopping mall it's any business right so what are what is your experience in what do you suggest uh, what to recommend them to to think about before starting any business what are the key elements are you speaking specifically about e-commerce or more generally a tech startup tech startup e-commerce you can consider both well i think it's um it really depends on your state of mind there are people who would never be uh, entrepreneurs because they don't have this uh, uh, energy they have another 
it's not criticism it's just various types of, of personalities and, and, and characters this is uh, there's a lot of um, I would say there are certain risks not huge risks but still certain risks you can spend a lot of time without earning anything and when you create a startup you have more chance to go bankrupt than That's to right. succeed and become a millionaire this is uh, there's a statistic that says that about 90% of startup projects and end up in a failure so uh, you know but still uh, First, you can do it, uh, uh, as I said, because it's uh, one of the ways you can change your life and change the world. Uh, and uh, it brings you a huge uh, freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, you are um, the mastering your own life. And this is a big change if compared to some people's previous experience in big corporations or, or, or state organizations. So this is for those who seek this freedom. This is one of the best uh, possible choices and I would also add that creating a startup now is has become very easy uh, because there are open source technologies uh, you know they are the kind of uh, abundance of of, uh, of, uh, of of venture capital of course if you have a good project but if you have a good project you will find money easily yeah. there's even crowdfunding you know uh, so uh, there's a sort of a commoditization of infrastructure you know plenty of accelerators incubators uh, some of them are free of charge so uh, on in a certain sense uh, there is um, you can find clients or or you know or, or employees or co-founders through LinkedIn you know. so all the tools are there in a sense it's easy to create startups and I'd even say that um, I was reading a book uh, recently the $100 startup Oh, amazing! I was not knowing about this. Can you show yeah. the complete complete cover? Yeah, hundred starts. Okay, so this book is available on Amazon and on other yes, platforms yes. as well. Yes, okay. for for ten or fifteen dollars, it's fantastic. Okay. It's about how how a corporate employee in the crisis of two thousand and eight, uh, yeah. who was fired, he thought it was the worst day in his life. He was very unhappy. Yeah. He wondered how I'm going to to feed my family, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Pay the rent, uh, and 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 one day. Uh, in the midst of this desperate situation, a friend mm -hmm. of him called him. Uh, mm -hmm. A friend of his called him and said, "Look, I have uh, um, uh, 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 ten or twenty mattresses that I, I have to." The friend was an entrepreneur, and I have to get rid of them. I'm leaving the I'm leaving the city. I'm going elsewhere, and I have these these mattresses. Please send them on eBay uh, yeah. and take half of the of the of the money that that is generated. And he did it, and he sold them very easily on eBay. And Great. he had the idea to do it another time and a third time, et cetera, et cetera. And he sold more and more mattresses on eBay. Uh, and then he, he created his only shop. So he, he created this startup with just $100 investment. And, and it succeeded. It was not, of course, it's, it's not like Amazon. It's still one of the billion entrepreneurs would become as rich, as, as successful yeah. as Jeff Bezos. But on the other hand, it it's a nice small business and he's yeah. very happy with it and he says that now he understands that the day when he lost his job in this big corporation was his best day in his life because he's changed life for, for the best so Absolutely. and we have other example for example uh, last year in ukraine uh, in the midst of the pandemic uh, mm -hmm. there was not a 100 dollars startup but was 55 dollars startup entrepreneurs oh, wow. who created a food delivery service in kiev in the middle of the lockdown Wow. They invested just $55 in the business to create Amazing. their MVP, their minimum viable product. Right. Yeah. It cost them just $55. They did it. Wow. It succeeded. Mm -hmm. And a few months later, they got an investment from local investors, and it grew a little bit. So Amazing. these are examples that in the midst of a crisis, uh, yeah. you can even in the midst of a crisis, you can create interesting projects for virtually nothing. So this is a very nice. This is, this is actually uh, inspiring. Inspiring the example we just 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 you have shared, right? So, what I was thinking about, you know, uh, the, from the from the entrepreneurship mindset, right? So, uh, I believe I strongly believe in uh, every opportunity is every difficult time. Every difficult time creates opportunity, right? So this pandemic also given an ample amount of opportunities to people who are looking for some kind of platform or some kind of opportunity to grow together, right? So can you just share some example? I seen um, you are advising so many startups in entire your you know, last 20 years. Have you come across, as you just explained, right? Some Russian uh, food delivery, that uh, site and all. Apart from that, have you come across any media industry or any IT industry 
they they come up with some kind of creative idea and they taken a you know some kind of they, they taken this difficult time as and converted into opportunity yes there are, well there's one classic example that everyone knows it's about airbnb yeah uh, airbnb uh wouldn't have become airbnb without the financial crisis of 2008 as Correct. people were ready to accept strangers in their house mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they desperately needed money so mm -hmm. this was the very classic example that everyone knows but in the last uh, year, uh, due to the you know pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, we wrote certain stories uh, uh -huh. about startups from uh -huh. Eastern Europe who brilliantly bring, mm -hmm. succeeded. I mm -hmm. cited already once one example was this fifty-five dollar startup from Ukraine. Mm -hmm. There are more uh, impressive examples. For example, a um, a company that was born in Russia in uh, uh, in a Russian city called Ulyanovsk ten years mm -hmm. ago. Uh, mm. uh, the the name of the startup is Equid. Uh, they uh, relocated to the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, they 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 do a small uh, a, a software for anyone to be able to sell goods on Facebook and social networks. They created this software, and anyone can use it easily. You know, just mm -hmm. you and me, we're not programmers, but we can just start selling selling stuff on Facebook through, through this software. So they saw this company, this Russian startup that relocated to the United States, as many startups, uh, they uh, they saw demand triple overnight uh, during mm -hmm. the, 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 the COVID crisis because so many small businesses were under immense pressure to transition to online ordering. So mm -hmm. this is what they did. And I'm also uh, an advisor of a startup, of a, of a French US startup, mm -hmm. uh, which is called Follow Analytics. Uh, it's approximately the same success stories. They created two years ago what they call the mobile app builder. It's a very powerful, sophisticated tool for people to create mobile apps uh, mm -hmm. instantly and very powerful mo mo mobile apps. Uh, and this product is very successful. It was successful before COVID, but during COVID, it would just skyrocketed because so many offline retailers yeah. needed to create mobile apps as fast as possible and good mobile apps to put their CRM online and their sales mm -hmm. online. So mm -hmm. they started buying this, this software from Follow Analytics and Follow Analytics has, is just thriving. Uh, uh, it's one of these startups that are thriving uh, amid, co uh, amid uh, these troubled times. So we wrote, and we can see in the tech media, plenty of stories of startups that do that, not only because they would create a vaccine or a, a medical product that would be immediately useful for, for to tackle the pandemic, but also indirectly, and I cited these two examples, and there I can cite other ones, you know. Yeah, I think these are the, the great examples, you know, whereas people can take inspiration from it and, and try to build something unique. Uh, that's what, you know, the more, uh, the learning out of this uh, success stories, right? But if you look at about success stories, do you have any, the 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 failure stories, right? Where some business entrepreneurs started something and they failed uh, during this pandemic and, and possibly we can highlight about that. What, what what was the learning from that, right? So I believe in failures. Okay, success is always you know getting a success is not a difficult task, but getting a failures and learning out of it and 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 do something different to learn and take that lesson and implement and create something very strong, right? So that failure story, uh, any failure business, right? Do you have an example just to share here with our all of our audience so they can understand very in in short. Uh, well, first of all, my own startup, uh, when I created my first startup in France uh, 20 years ago, we failed, although the vision was brilliant, etc. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the market conditions were not very favorable and we did yeah. some mistakes, so we failed. And it's as you say, it's very important to fail. And it's a pity that in some countries, it's not a good thing to be a failed entrepreneur. In other countries like the United States, failure is a could be an asset because people understand that it's the first pancake and that you will make the second one much better. But in other countries, so in, in recent examples, um, well, uh, a few days ago, I, I, I talked with a uh, an entrepreneur who uh, in the in the wine industry in France, and uh, he started um, uh, selling wine uh, very successfully. But the COVID stopped that because he sold wine to restaurants and cafes and everything, and all that has been shut down in France for the last year approximately so uh you know it's the ended a beautiful business that were all all chances of success but this ended in that way uh more generally speaking in the in the tech uh, startup world 
uh, there have been failures, obviously. There have been successes, failures due to the COVID or encouraged <laughs> by the COVID. But generally speaking, the sector, the industry is, is really alive and even, even developing very fast because uh, not only because the pandemic has accelerated certain things in certain segments, but perhaps more fundamentally because, you know, startup entrepreneurs and innovative and, and disruptive innovation is, is something that fits into crisis, you know? Uh, it's, it's, um, uh, it's about it. Startup entrepreneurs are, 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 are by definition flexible and by definition they are disrupting things. So they are probably much more adapted to, 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 to troubled times than big organizations or, or corporations that, that, that have to, that, you know, they, they cannot change overnight like Titanic, uh, couldn't change the, fast enough to avoid the iceberg. So yeah. this is why uh, I, 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 I'm not astonished that many startups succeed, not all, but many startups do succeed in times of pandemics. And I'm not very su surprised as well to see that in certain countries, the volume of venture investment has increased considerably last year. You know, for example, in England, uh, it, it, it increased by 50% in France as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, this is a sign of, of the fact that investors, uh, they do trust the potential, they do believe in the potential of, of tech startups to address the, the all possible distru disruptions, crises, and the transformation of our world. This is not, this is here to stay. Absolutely, Adrian. I think, uh, you know, uh, for for me, right, so what I, what I, you know, I just thought to share this information because people are, you know, are, are, are listening to our discussion. For me, the pillar of uh, Nokia, Nokia is a best example. If you look at mobile company, right, so hardware selling company, and also there was a Kodak camera company, right, where 20 years back, we look at cameras, we are using all Kodak cameras, right? That the role cameras all. The I feel that the, the biggest failure on the, in their ideology was they were not about thinking about change. They were not innovative. So Nokia was only thinking about the cheap handset and handset which are reliable for everyone, but they never invested on the technology and also also you know dynamic uh, situation, whereas you know, other like Apple, uh, Samsung, Motorola, they come up with different Android phones different some you know like some smartphones right but but nokia realized that 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 need uh, very late and that's what uh, i think that's a failure for nokia if you look at now when the nokia almost 20 years was one of the biggest giant in the mobile in provider right and similarly for kodak as well right so these two failures uh, i think possibly being an entrepreneur we should uh, you know we should propagate the message to the people who are looking for any startup industries to think about ideas think about innovation uh, where you can bring the values in the market and be different be different from the industry uh, and don't copy ideas from someone else uh, that will make you more different right eventually here in the situation uh, kodak and uh, nokia they never adapted market need they never understood how we are you know changing our lifestyle and 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 making that uh, you know adaptability uh, and and necessity matching with the people expectation and that was a failure so i understood uh, now this this kind of failure is more important uh, to to know people and take a lesson out of it and i think that was more more important to you know to 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 lead any organization which you think which you can take to the to the peak level and and get that you know into that the top level so i think that should be considered being a being a entrepreneur perspective we have a question from yeah we have a question from uh, our uh, the director of asia whose name is nilay chatraj he he wanted to check uh, he raised a question he asking that post covid 19 situation which is most important uh, for industry is that capital or is that uh, the people right as i mentioned the capital right so some industries focusing on money some industries focusing on labor so from your perspective for east west digital news what is more important for you i'm going to comment only on the startup industry because capital or labor and people is can be can look completely different in other industries you know Correct. but mm -hmm. in the field of startups it's uh, on the one hand it's two two are in most cases uh necessary although you yep. can create a startup without capital as we mentioned in these mm -hmm. 100 dollars startups mm -hmm. um in most cases the two go together mm -hmm. uh, but at the end of the day i think that it's still people 
because mm-hmm. especially now capital is super abundant no there's plenty of money in the world Absolutely. it's unimaginable venture not only venture capital but plenty of of people of wealthy individuals who can become business angels plenty of of grants plenty of you know so money is not an issue if you have a good project it's not an issue but the issue is to be the right person and by the way this is what what any venture investor will look first for them it's more important to 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 see the team and the founders uh, than anything else you know of course they look at the product the business plan but the team is so important so i would i would still place the, the in the field of startup especially the 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 the, the human capital as the, the the key the first the the overarching uh, factor of success or failure no, actually, uh, that's that's rightly rightly said, right? So I think uh, people are more important, right? So it doesn't matter situation. If you don't have people, you cannot earn money. You cannot get a capital, right? But if people are there in a the company who wanted to to work hard and take your company to the next level, possibly there will be plenty of money, right? In upcoming years, right? So as you mentioned clearly, the labor are most important, right? So capital will definitely will take time because as we are going through difficult time in this crisis, and you know. It's all about the 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 time and you know, patience. We have to keep it and and get that you know get that into into right level. Wait for some time and and get that money back, right? So always money will come, but we have to always think about and care about people. That's what the ultimate answer from this question. I think uh, that's a that's amazing uh, input from you, Adrian. Apart from that, uh, I have one last question before uh, you know uh, concluding our discussion. Um, if you from your experience perspective, if if you wanted to train ten entrepreneurs in your life, let's imagine that scenario. What are the qualities you are looking for those ten people, and and how you consider and how you qualify those ten entrepreneurs to train them and educate them about about how to start any IT industry, any business? What are the prime qualities you are looking for in a person? Well, I'm talking about ten person. Immediately coming to my mind is the idea of a combination of energy and mm. and 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 belief in 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 the in the in the in the project in the mission and this kind of sometimes uh, crazy faith in in what they do because without that you would not stand up, stand it it's too difficult it's too 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 tiring it's you know it might be exhausting you can spend months and months preparing projects without any revenues or even years so it's this really needs faith so Absolutely. you this is can see can be seen in the eyes or heard in the words of a person and then, and of course in his actions so the combination of that with a humble posture because uh, not only if it's a young entrepreneur, uh, even when you're 30 or 40 year old, even if you succeeded once, it doesn't mean that you will necessarily succeed twice because you might have succeeded by chance. Uh, and even in, and, 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 and all this world is changing so fast and you know we're speaking with stru- disruption, transformation, etc. So you have to be humble. Even if you're not that young, you have to be humble and say, look, I can learn from that person. I can learn from that study. Uh, I, I'm not sure of, 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 I have that faith, but how to implement that is, is that is the question. And I'm open to some new vision that is being brought by, uh, by, by something I can read in the newspaper or hear from a mentor or an advice from a friend or, you know, this is very important. This would be the first thing that comes to my mind. This combination of crazy Actually, faith, but modesty and uh, humility at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. You're on the right, uh, right, you know, right on the bank, right? So I think uh, the mindset is more important, right? So when we select someone, let's say if, if I need journalists, if I need editors to work for Transcontinental Times, I always look for this quality as well. Because mindset is more important. The person should not have any arrogance, right? So I just recently gone through one case study, whereas one Oxford, uh, the pass out student or the person who was recently graduated, uh, he was posting on some message on LinkedIn saying that he's not having a job and uh, and he's struggling since last two years. Uh, but he was 
a excellent in his academics excellent excellent everything right so if you look at but when i studied about the person when i got all the comments when i read the comments he i saw some arrogance right so when people go for higher education let's say that the person is passed out from harvard university passed out people passed out from the oxford university they feel that that's a, that's the end of life that's a, you know that's everything they they own everything right so but that's not the way right the education i think it acts like a driving license right but after that you have to drive your car if you if you if you holding a driving license and if you are not driving your car with right mindset to help others or also think about pollution control and some of the different factors how you can how you can become successful right so so what i see is the mostly people right now you know you know if you, if you look at the trend since last 10 years the most youth the the, the most young graduates coming from this higher university uh, the world in order university they are having little bit of you know some people are having arrogance some people having the mindset not to accept the change for example if adrian is telling something this should not be done they will intensely try to invest their mind to do something which not been you know which not been advised for so this kind of mindset is creating a disruption uh, in the ecosystem what i say and i think uh, for me education is almost important but with that combination the the human humanity the mindset as you mentioned rightly we have to be humble doesn't matter if if we are leading any organization doesn't matter we are you know leading uh, you know big organization a big big group of people right we have to support people we have to equally collaborate and help others to grow that is the purpose of life but some people lost this interest and they are living their life you know just for okay enjoying uh, their their life eating food on weekends going for cinema you know so, so what is the purpose of that so this kind of uh, this kind of education is more important getting a you know university degree from oxford harvard doesn't change your life ultimately people has to adapt the the need of society and accordingly they have to contribute in the in that ground level uh, situation otherwise the importance of people will not be will not be interested in in, uh, in you know interested by someone else right so i think uh, you 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 are on a right uh, right target you know you you given a proper uh, you know the answers with respect to the questions which we have raised adrian so uh, in a last one minute i want to conclude uh, this this session right so adrian uh, if you if we get an opportunity uh, to to talk to european union about the problems which i mentioned before about uh, the the transparent and uh, and uh, you know the 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 strong foundation of media industry worldwide how we can approach can we create a group of people who are ceos of different media industries and let's start with europe that was my idea from transparent times what do you think what do you see about this approach I, I, I don't know what they already do perhaps they already do something in supporting for example mm. uh, especially within the european union or perhaps outside mm. uh, some independent media that in certain countries uh, are not fully um, uh, developed uh, you know respected yeah. uh, well i don't know what they do but certainly uh, they can do things first mm. uh, as you said um, in education education mm. program is important what a good journalism yeah. uh, secondly uh, if these uh, countries are member states they mm -hmm. can really and this is a mission of the european union not only to do business and facilitate business business between countries but also to be uh, strict on on ethics and and human rights and uh, free press is a part of human rights and mm -hmm. i think the european union can do something. I wouldn't believe in the United Nations, but okay. I would believe that the European Union may do something in the member states to help if ever the, 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 the media are not uh, protected enough, they can they probably have some levers to, to play there. Uh, also, uh, the European Union, uh, since it is public money, public money should not be only helping big business. Public Absolutely. money should also help small businesses and small entrepreneurs and small underfinanced media that do exceptional things, very interesting things that the mainstream media wouldn't do, wouldn't notice or wouldn't be interested. Or uh, if the, the mainstream media is owned by, by big economic or business, etc., uh, they would just not do it because they don't want to to, to investigate in certain things. So this is the role, the very important role of small media, uh, independent media, and, and this costs some money. So Absolutely. 
The second thing the European Union should do, perhaps they already do it, but this definitely would be a good thing to, to, to continue it or doing it or to reinforce it, that is to, uh, to, to, to support financially projects, concrete yep. projects of investigations or concrete medias that do, that have an ability uh, to... Yes, that have proven their ability to, to do what mainstream media do not do for any reason. Correct. I think uh, this was, uh, you know, uh, the, the right answers which you have given. I think we can possibly work together later on and think about the, what are the possible ways to, to connect with European Union uh, people and also understand what they're looking for. And we can contribute towards, at least from Europe perspective. And if that is rolled out, possibly you can reach out to Africa, then then Asia and then America. So. Yeah. I think looking forward for you know those kind uh, of changes. Yeah, I'll be happy to to contribute to any uh, any suggestions to the design and writing of any suggestion to to the to these authorities from my angle, my point of view. Perfect, Adrian. I think we are in a time, and uh, you know, uh, we covered almost all the angles. Possibly, we will again invite you in upcoming months uh, we are having some you know the schedules planned with different entrepreneurs from different countries so thank you very much adrian for taking the time and uh, and transforming times is is grateful for your your contribution towards media industry and looking forward to to redefine journalism industry in upcoming years and working towards your mission and transforming times will support you guys as well as you are going as you are doing good good work keep doing good work and thank you very much thank you Russian. see you, see you. bye 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 bye, -bye. bye, -bye.